Okay, in this video, we are going to figure out the improper integral of 1 to infinity of 2 over x squared minus 1. We know this is improper because we see the infinity, huh? And that's the type 1 situation. We have an infinite interval. But this right here is also a type 2 situation because if you put 1 in here, 1 squared is 1, minus 1 is 0, in the denominator. And 2 over 0 in that situation, you actually end up with a vertical asymptote. So this is also a type 2 situation. Therefore, this right here, it's actually both type 1 and type 2 situation. And this is how we have to take care of an uh, improper integral that's both type 1 and type 2. And the deal is that we are going to write this as two integrals. And the reason is because, imagine, you see, we have a trouble place here. When you have a trouble place in an improper integral, you have to take the limit. And maybe I can say a goes to 1. But in the meantime, hey, infinity is also a trouble place. I'm stuck. So we are going to use some other properties of integrals to break this apart. And then we take care of the improper integral situation. Let's look at the graph right here real quick. If you look at the graph right here, when x is 1, you have the vertical asymptote. And then the graph of 2 over x squared minus 1 will look like this. This integral is trying to calculate the area from 1, which is right here, to infinity, meaning the whole thing. Well, I'm going to break this into two regions by picking another number. It has to be innocent. Let's just pick 2. Like, why not, huh? So I will put down 2 right here. And then you'll see, you're just going to find out the first part, which is right here. And then we just have to add that with the other one, this part. Well, if both of them are finite, when you add them out, of course, you'll get a finite value. That means this converges because we have a finite area. But if this diverges, well, it doesn't really matter what this is. If one of them diverges, the whole thing diverges, right? But anyway, the first thing is, we are going to write this integral as the integral from 1, and technically it's 1 plus, because when you are taking a limit, so it's technically 1 plus, to 2. 2 is the innocent number, and then 2 over x squared minus 1, like that. And again, let me indicate that this right here is technically 1 plus. Okay, So it's 1 from the right-hand side because you are just looking at this region. And then, of course, don't forget the dx. And then you are going to add this width, the integral from 2, to infinity. And for the second one, the infinity is the trouble place. And we have the same integral inside, of course, like this. Well, let's write this as a limit definition because it's kind of confusing when you have a uh, improper integral, now it's with two parts, two types. First one, here's a trouble place, it's on the bottom, so we take a to be the variable we use. We take the limit as a going to 1 plus, and then you look at this as the integral from a to 2, and then 2 over x squared minus 1 dx, like that. For this one, we are going to have the limit as b, because it's on the top, b going to infinity. And then we have the same thing inside, of course, the integral from 2. But this is b, and then the rest are the same, of course, like this. right? And now, remember, we just have to integrate, integrate, and then plug in, plug in, and then take the limit. We'll see how the integration is going to be. So let me make a note right here. Note, for the integral of 2 over x squared minus 1 dx, you have to remember your partial fractions and all the techniques. This right here, you can factor it. This is x minus 1 times x plus 1. Therefore, we can do this by partial fraction. So we have the first one being something over x minus 1, and then the second one is going to be something over x plus 1 dx like this. And we can do this by the cover up method. Here we have x minus 1, so let's figure this out by covering this up. 
how can you make x minus 1 equal to 0? x has to be 1. So you put 1 into this x. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 over 2, you get 1. So here you have 1, all right? <laughs> and then, on the other hand, here you have x plus 1. So you come here, cover this up, and you ask yourself, how can you make x plus 1 0? x has to be negative 1. You put negative 1 here, 2 over negative 1 minus 1, 2 over negative 2, you get negative 1. So this right here, you integrate this, you will get 1 times natural log absolute value of x minus 1. And then for the second one, you have the minus, and then you integrate this, you get natural log of x plus 1. And then, of course, we can combine the natural logs. You end up with natural log absolute value of this on the top over that on the bottom. And uh, I'm not going to put on plus z because we don't need it right here. That was just a little appetizer. We need that. But when you put this back, you don't have to. So let's see what we have for the first one. Let's focus on this one first. Take the limit as a going 1 plus, right, going to 1 plus. Remember, you always do the integral first, which we did, we found the antiderivative, which is the limit, well, which is the, not the limit, which is the natural log, absolute value, x minus 1 over x plus 1, like this. And then we have to plug in, plug in, right? So plug in a and 2, 2 goes first. And let's figure this out first, right? So imagine if I put down 2, but don't forget you are still taking the limit. And again, I'm using the limit when I'm writing down the limit. It's because for this one, it's slightly trickier. If you only have like one type situation, you can just ignore the limit. You can just plug in numbers like how I did it in my other videos, the shorthand way, but I just write down the limit in this case. Anyway, put in 2. We have natural log absolute value 2 minus 1 over 2 plus 1. So it's 2 plus 1, like this. And then don't forget we have to subtract plugging a, which is natural log absolute value of a minus 1 over a plus 1, like this. Pretty good, huh? Well, this one here is not bad. Ln, this is just pretty much 1 over 2, so it's L, well, 1 over 3, so Ln of 1 third. That's, that's good. But for this one, this is where we have to take the limit. So you put 1 plus in here, you get what? Let's see. I think we can draw a conclusion, so that's good. If you do that, you will end up with natural log absolute value 1 plus right here, minus 1 over 1 plus plus 1, like this. This right here is 0 plus on the top over 2. 2 plus doesn't matter. In another way, you just get 0 plus, though, because 0 plus divided by a finite value is just 0 plus, like this. And as we all know, when you have a natural log of 0 plus, this right here is negative infinity we get to draw a conclusion, right? And you see, we have another negative in the front, like this. And then this right here, it was just natural log of one third. But the deal is that this is finite plus infinity pretty much, and you get infinite. Therefore, this part, you have infinite area. In fact, you can just end this right here already because the whole integral diverge. This right here diverges. So I'll tell you right here, this right here is just diverges. And the truth is, you don't even have to bother with this. Because, again, whenever you split the integral into two parts, if one part diverges, that's it. Right? That's it, that's it, that's it. But imagine, if you have this question on the test individually, yes, it's divergent. But if you have this question on the test individually, let's do it as well. All right, suppose you have this integral to deal with only, then you'll see 
this right here, it's again pretty much the negative ln of one third from here. Right? That was just worked out. It's finite value. It's good. But for this one, the trick is when you have the limit as b going to infinity, natural log of b minus 1 over b plus 1, well, you can take the limit inside out because natural log is a continuous function. So if you look at b minus 1 over b plus 1 as b going to infinity, you can just care about the b and also the b. You can just reduce that because they have the same power, they have the same thing. So in fact, this right here, you'll end up with, let me just put this down right here, natural log of 1. So we did take the limit, right, technically. And then of course this is just going to be 0, and then this is going to be minus natural log of 1 third. And if I put on negative natural log of 1 third, it seems like this is a negative number, but this is above the x-axis. But the deal is that this is in fact positive. Let me show you. One third is the same as saying 3 to the negative 1 power, and then you can bring the negative power to the front. So all in all, this part gives you positive natural log of 3, right? So if this was a question by itself, the answer will be natural log of 3. And I will just write down everything for you guys, right? So it really depends on what questions that you are working with. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you.